Hi. Today I'd like to discuss how it is we're going to operate our above ground two post hoist. The most significant thing to worry about when putting a car on the hoist is the positioning of the car itself. The car must be absolutely centered left to right between the columns and we need the center of gravity of the car centered between the columns. If the car is centered left to right and the center of gravity is in between the columns, we have our best opportunity for a safe lift. These are the arms of the hoist. The arms will actually support the weight of the vehicle. You'll notice that the arm is telescoping and it has three sections, an inner, a middle, and the part that's actually connected to the saddle of the hoist. When given the opportunity, we'd like to keep the hoist as rigid as possible. So we extend the medium arm first, and if additional reach is needed, then extend the center arm. The rear arm of the hoist only has two pieces. It only has a center section. You'll need to extend that to wherever is convenient for the lifting points. Once the car is centered between the posts and the arms have been placed in the correct position, we'll approach the controls. It's the operator of the hoist's responsibility to make sure that no one is in a position where they'd be injured when the hoist begins to move and that nothing above the car is in a position to be damaged during the move. Clear! Clear! Then press the green button to begin the lift. As we lift the vehicle, we're going to be listening for the engagement of the mechanical locks that happen every few inches as the lift column rises. When the lift is finished in the position you want it, the only thing holding the car is the hydraulic pressure in the lines. It's unsafe to work under a vehicle supported only by hydraulics. So immediately, we will then release hydraulic pressure and allow the car and the carriages to fall gently until they are supported by the mechanical locks. Once we reach the mechanical locks, it's safe to get under the car. When lowering the car, it's important that we get the car off of the mechanical locks. Currently, with the weight of the car on the locks, we cannot operate the locks. We first have to lift the car a little bit to take the tension off and then we can operate the mechanical locks. So in order to go down, we must first go up. Usually an inch or two is sufficient. Once we've lifted it and we're not on the mechanical locks, we can take our hand and with a firm single motion, hold it all the way down to lower the car. This combination of pulling the mechanical locks out of the way and triggering the switch to lower hydraulic pressure. If it's needed to lower the car onto the locks, we use the red button. That causes the carriage to fall until the mechanical locks have engaged. But if we want to put the car all the way down, we use the lever. As we hold the lever, the mechanical locks are pulled out of the way and the hydraulic pressure is released. You will need to hold the lever for the entire time while the car comes down. First a little bit up, and then holding the lever the entire time as the car glides to the bottom. Sometimes you can use your arm as a measuring device to let you know how accurately you've positioned the car. This is going to be fine. Although it's uncomfortable to get down onto the ground, getting your head underneath the car is probably the only accurate way to position the hoist pads. Swing the arms underneath where you believe you want to lift on, and in this case, I have a reinforced box section. I'm going to put the pad underneath the section of the frame, or the pinch weld in this case, and I'm going to measure the distance away from it using my three fingers. It's not important the distance, but it is important that the distance is the same on all four hoist pads.
once you've set all the hoist pads to the same height, the car will lift much more smoothly and be balanced. Three points establishes a plane, but the fourth point prevents it from rocking. As the arms make contact with the pinch welds of the body, and we start to lift, as soon as the tires leave the ground, we need to check our hoist to make sure it's not going to rock excessively. Just give the car a firm shake. If everything's okay, continue with the lift. When the lift has reached the height that you're comfortable with, you'll need to press the red button to release the hydraulic pressure. The lift will fall until it hits the mechanical locks. Once the pressure is relieved and the vehicle's on its mechanical locks, it's safe to work under it and around it. When you're putting your car on the hoist, the most intimidating part is to try and find the right place for the lift pads to actually contact the car. This automobile has a strong pinch weld that extends down the entire length of the car. It also has a boxed section that's been reinforced. It would be appropriate to lift on the boxed section or the pinch weld on this particular car. The pinch weld runs the length of the car. It's three layers of metal thick and it's strong enough to support the weight. If you attempted to try and get onto the front cradle, you'd probably have to extend the arm too far and you may be out of balance.